I can tell you from firsthand experience that having diabetes doesn't have to seal your fate with peripheral neuropathy. We need to give your nerves a shield of armor to protect them from any damage or continued damage. Diabetic peripheral neuropathy, or DPN, is the most common complication of diabetes. In fact, more than 60% of all diabetics will develop peripheral nerve damage. And most doctors are simply telling their patients there's nothing that can be done and they just have to live with it. It's part of the diabetes. Well, in working with neuropathy cases for 18 plus years, I can tell you with great confidence, no, you don't have to live with it, even if you do have diabetes. Your peripheral neuropathy and its symptoms can be reversed. However, it's not an easy task because the nerves will have a propensity to get damaged again from your elevated glucose levels. So in this second part of my video series on diabetes and neuropathy, I'll cover what needs to be done to repair the nerve damage caused by high glucose levels, how to protect the nerves from ongoing glucose damage, especially if your sugar levels tend to be all over the board, and lastly, is changing your diet even necessary? Coming up. Hey gang, it's great to see you again. Now, let's dive into today's video. Most people think because they have diabetes that they're now sen sentenced to a life of living with peripheral neuropathy and its horrible symptoms. Well, this certainly can be one truth, but I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be your truth. Remember, the question we've been talking about is, if I have peripheral neuropathy from my diabetes, can my nerves ever be healed? And I'm thrilled to say yes, absolutely. I can tell you from firsthand experience that having diabetes doesn't have to seal your fate with peripheral neuropathy. The first thing that I want to address right now is how you can protect your nerves from chronically elevated or fluctuating levels of glucose in the bloodstream. It's important that we cover this first, otherwise it can be an uphill battle repairing the nerves while the offending agent, in this case, your elevated glucose, is still present. So we need to give your nerves a shield of armor to protect them from any damage or continued damage. The best way you can do this is by taking an amino acid called acetyl-L-carnitine. Sometimes it's referred to by its abbreviation, Alcar. Now to add to this great news, scientists also found that this amino acid works by several mechanisms. It will induce regeneration of the injured nerve fibers, meaning it helps it grow new healthy nerve fibers. It reduces oxidative stress to the nerves. It improves mitochondrial function. And if you're not sure what this means, make sure you watch Dr. C's video on the miracle molecule. I'll include the link down below for you. And the other thing that it accomplishes is it increases nerve growth factor. This is a protein that's critical in the development and the survival of nerve cells, especially the ones that transmit the signals for pain, temperature, and touch sensations. But wait, it still gets better. Research shows that acetyl-L-carnitine also relieved acute and chronic pain, including diabetic nerve pain for neuropathy sufferers. This is huge because regularly prescribed neuropathy meds like gabapentin, Lyrica, and Cymbalta have so many side effects. Well, needless to say, this is one supplement that every diabetic should be taking, even if you haven't developed neuropathy yet, because the research shows by protecting the nerves, there's a very good possibility that you can prevent peripheral neuropathy from ever developing. Now, let's move on to another important fact. Did you know a very large portion of diabetics will be deficient in vitamins B1, B6, B12, and folate? One of the reasons for this is due to the amount of processed food and beverages in their diet. But there's another more shocking reason. Many diabetic medications like metformin, glucophage, and glipizide are known to decrease the absorption of vitamin B12 and folate in the body, leading to these deficiencies. So why am I even bringing this up? Well, these vitamins are imperative to your nerve health and function. If you suffer deficiencies or even suboptimal levels of these vitamins, you'll end up with nerve damage, even if you're not diabetic. But for people who are diabetic, 
These medications just add one more nail in the coffin, ensuring that you'll develop peripheral neuropathy. So every diabetic should be on a good quality nerve support formula. If you haven't developed peripheral neuropathy yet, the right nerve support formula will help prevent this. But if you already have neuropathy, it's imperative for your nerve repair. If you haven't seen my video, Vital Nutrients for Nerve Repair, this is a great video that will teach you about what your nerves need for healing. Don't worry, I'll leave a link for you in the description box below also so you can check it out when you have time. So let's look at a brief overview of critical B vitamins you need to support your nerve repair. Let's start with vitamin B12. B12 should only be taken in the form of methylcobalamin. Its job is to promote nerve cell survival and remyelination, which is repair of the protective coat around the nerve, known as the myelin sheath. So the basic role that vitamin B12 plays in nerve health is by assisting regeneration of injured nerves and improving conduction of nerve signals. There's still one more important point. Research studies have found that methylcobalamin decreases pain signals and symptoms associated with peripheral nerve damage. So that's a really nice bonus. The next B vitamin we'll look at is vitamin B6, which you can find in two different forms. Make sure you watch my video, B6, helpful or harmful, to learn about the safest form to take. I'll leave that link for you down below as well. The safe and proper form of B6 balances nerve metabolism by helping your body produce neurotransmitters. This is a chemical substance that is released at the end of nerve fibers when an electrical signal arrives, and it allows the signal to cross over to the connecting nerve, so it acts like a bridge. So this one is absolutely instrumental in ensuring that your nerve fibers have the ability to transmit signals throughout your entire body. Now, let's look at vitamin B1 in the form of benfodiamine. Benfodiamine's job is to protect your nerves from the damage of environmental influences like chemicals found in food and beverages, high sugar consumption, and AGEs, or advanced glycation end products. This vitamin is critical to diabetics for a few reasons. First, the more glucose you have in your blood, the more depleted your B1 levels become. Secondly, Elevated glucose creates oxidation and AGEs, which damages the nerves. Benfodiamin has an amazing ability to protect the nerves, and it also has the ability to decrease your glucose and your hemoglobin A1C. The third reason is that it has the ability to decrease your hemoglobin A1C levels. And reason number four is that benfodiamin can protect the nerve cells in the brain from damage. I'll include the link to my video called The Amazing Benefits of Benfodiamin for you. Right now, we're going to move on to the last B vitamin, and that's folate, or B9. Folate is important for three things, nerve health, survival, and regeneration. Folate plays an important role in maintaining the health of the mitochondria and the nerve cells. Remember, mitochondria are the energy suppliers for the nerves. Without enough folate, this can cause a disruption in their function, or it can cause a malformation of the mitochondria, which can lead to peripheral neuropathy. Now, a question I'm commonly asked is, can I just take a regular B complex that has all of these B vitamins and more? And this is certainly a fair question, but unfortunately, the answer is no. A B complex won't be effective in repairing the damage done to the peripheral nerves because B complex vitamins don't have the proper ratios of B1, B6, B12, and folate that are necessary for nerve repair. Also, most will contain B1 in the wrong form. It'll be in the form of thiamine, not benfodiamine. So you simply won't achieve the same healing with a B-complex supplement as you would with a specific nerve support formula. As a diabetic, there are still a couple more nutrients that are necessary for your nerve health. Those two nutrients are R-alpha-lipoic acid and berberine. There are hundreds of studies showing that both RALA and berberine have the capability to decrease blood sugar levels in type 2 diabetes and improve insulin sensitivity of all of the cells. And what's even more exciting is that both of these nutrients were shown to be as effective as taking metformin or glucophage without all of the side effects. So that's huge. Now, here's an important side note, guys. 
Although RALA is not a strong antioxidant by itself, it has the ability to increase glutathione, vitamin C, and vitamin E production, which are three of the most powerful antioxidants in the body. Because of this, it can squelch free radicals, um, which do enormous damage to the nerve cells, not to mention they cause cancer. But wait, it gets even better still. Did you know that diabetes increases your risk of developing dementia and Alzheimer's? RALA has the ability to easily pass into the brain. This is a tremendous benefit because researchers have found that it has protective factors for both brain cells as well as peripheral nerves. And as a result, clinical studies, studies have shown that RALA can help improve Alzheimer's caused by diabetes. The therapeutic amount of RALA to take is 300 milligrams twice per day. Now, let's talk about berberine. Berberine is a plant extract. We've already mentioned its incredible ability to decrease glucose and improve insulin sensitivity. This compound contains both antibiotic and anti-inflammatory properties. Along with that, berberine also has been shown to protect nerves from chemical toxicity. But there's an even greater reason that diabetics want to add berberine to their list of supplements. Berberine has been shown to improve insulin secretion by resuscitating the exhausted pancreas cells which produce insulin known as the islets. One last added bonus, studies have shown that berberine reduces LDL cholesterol, that's the bad cholesterol linked with heart disease, it reduces triglycerides, and it also reduces systolic blood pressure. Okay guys, here's an extremely important side note. It's vitally important to monitor your glucose levels daily. And for those on insulin, a couple of times per day when taking RALA and, and berberine. It's been my experience that these supplements are so good at dropping your glucose levels that when taken in conjunction with oral medications like metformin or even insulin, it can cause your blood glucose levels to drop too low and it can do it too fast. Now, I don't want this to alarm you. You just need to be diligent. The great news is, as your glucose levels decrease and your hemoglobin A1C goes down, meaning your insulin sensitivity increases, your doctor will be able to decrease the amount of diabetes medications that you need. Now, it's important for you to know, never alter your diabetes medication or doses without the supervision of your doctor. Recommended amounts of berberine are 500 milligrams taken twice daily. You should begin to see improvement in your hemoglobin A1C after about three months of being on berberine and R-alpha lipoic acid. So lastly, let's look at the role of L-citrulline and how it works with diabetes. Remember, we mentioned in video one that rising glucose levels do damage to blood vessels, especially the small vessels known as capillaries that deliver oxygen and vital nutrients to the nerves. L-citrulline enhances nitric oxide production, which increases circulation to the peripheral nerves as well as the organs. It also improves the health of the blood vessel walls. Research studies recommend taking 2,000 milligrams daily. The last topic I want to discuss for reversing diabetic neuropathy is diet. This is a topic that everybody hates because they assume they'll never be able to enjoy eating their favorite junk food again. By the way, the same foods that contributed to this health crisis. Remember, the main issue in addressing diabetes is the inability to keep your blood glucose within safe ranges. And the biggest effect on your blood glucose is your diet. So yes, I'm gonna tell you that changing your diet is imperative, but it's not as bad as you think. You don't have to give up all of the foods that you're addicted to. I bet I have your attention now, don't I? So let's talk about how the heck that's even possible. First, I wanna tell you that I've been in clinical practice for 30 years and I've tried many different uh, diet regimens with my patients who have diabetes. What I found absolutely, without a doubt, works the best is the ketogenic diet. A keto diet does a phenomenal job decreasing glucose levels and weight. And what I like about it for my patients is they don't suffer with carb cravings like they do with many other diets. So when you look at a keto diet, it's an ultra low carb 
diet with very high fat. This high fat consumption is what allows a person to feel satiated, which curbs carbohydrate cravings. Now, as effective as the keto diet is at managing glucose levels and achieving weight loss, I only place my patients on this diet short term because there are some drawbacks to it. The average person consuming a keto diet has a tendency to cut out most vegetables and consume mainly protein and fat. This greatly reduces the fiber content in the diet. It's not healthy, it's not balanced, and this isn't how a true keto diet is designed. But more often than not, it is how it gets interpreted. The other issue is many people will mistakenly assume that any fat is good for a keto diet when nothing could be further from the truth. The keto diet also touts cream cheese as a good source of fat. However, most commercial cream cheese is a highly processed cheese. So what research studies have found is the way most people follow the keto diet leaves them with some nutrient deficiencies. Now, in all my years of practice, I've learned for a patient to stay on board with lifestyle changes, there must be a reward. So I always allow my patients to have one cheat day per week. This means once per week, they can eat or drink anything that they want from the time they get up till the time they go to bed. And yes, I even allow this for my diabetic patients. So I bet you're wondering, how is this possible or even effective? Guys, remember, I am the ultimate research geek. <laughs> Research studies have shown that having a cheat day has many benefits. It increases the body's metabolism, causing you to burn more calories. It increases levels of the leptin hormone, which helps maintain energy balance in the body and inhibits hunger. In fact, on a cheat day, your body can increase your leptin production by 30% for up to 24 hours. And it gives a person something to look forward to so they don't feel deprived. So the last question you might wonder is, why don't I restrict what they eat and how much they eat on their cheat day? Well, I do this for two reasons. One is psychological. My patient knows they don't have to just pick one food to splurge on or just one meal, which believe it or not, can be very stressful for them. Secondly, when someone suddenly says, you can't have something, Ever notice how the, that thing will begin to consume your thoughts and now all of a sudden you want it? <laughs> yep, it's crazy, but that's how the human psyche works. So I use this knowledge to my advantage. I know that after eating healthy for six days, on the first cheat day, the person goes a bit crazy. And that's okay, because usually it leaves them feeling sick, bloated, sluggish, and just plain yucky. And after that, they don't go into a crazy binge on their next cheat day uh, that they'll have the following week. I've been using this approach for decades and it's extremely effective. My patients can stay on their healthy lifestyle change much longer than someone who's going through a dietary deprivation. Well, that's it for now, gang. Remember, if you have prediabetes or diabetes, it's important to protect your nerves because the impact won't just damage the peripheral nerves, but it will cause global damage throughout your entire body. And frankly, I like to think you guys have way too much living to do to have the quality of your life diminished. As always, thanks for watching and following us. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And remember, we release new videos every week. So make sure you click on the bell to get notified. If you're enjoying our videos, the best way you can support us is by liking this video and sharing it with others. This helps neuropathy sufferers know there is hope and they're not alone. Until next time, my friends, I look forward to seeing you on the road to great nerve health. Blessings injured nerve fibers, meaning <laughs> helper number two. <laughs> Hi, Lily. <laughs> Hi, baby boy. Initiated, which curbs carbohydrate crate, uh, which, <laughs> I gotta go back on that one. <laughs>